feel like it's been a while since I've done this. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Greg here. Yes, Happy New Year, by the way. It is now 2023. And as you may have guessed from seeing the title of this video, uh, 2023 looks like it's going to be a pretty big year for Apple with a whole slew of product announcements. So for this video, I want to go over all of the products that I expect Apple to release in 2023. And yeah, Apple usually does this with uh, separate events, which I think there's probably going to be around three, maybe four events for all of uh, 2023. So I kind of want to break this video down in chronological order, kind of go event to event to event and talk about the products that I would expect Apple to release in that time frame. Obviously, towards the later half of 2022, Apple was supposed to release uh, some new products, namely some new Macs. And yeah, that didn't happen, right? Like you're, you're sitting here in 2023 watching this video and you know Apple didn't release those Macs. So it looks like these new Macs are kind of ready to go and Apple's just kind of waiting uh, for a good time to release them. So I would guess that would probably be around March. You know, Apple usually does a spring event. Uh, these Macs look like they're close to being done. So a March event to me makes sense. Now, what products can we expect at this March event? Well, I think the most obvious is the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro. Again, like I mentioned before, we saw some leaked Geekbench benchmarks specifically with that M2 Max chip. Uh, this is going to be a Pretty nice jump for the M2 chip generation because we are seeing single core scores that are now going in or above uh, the 2000 range. And then multi-core performance, that's that's a nice little bump up from where the M1 Pro and Max are uh, with around a 14,000 multi-core score. Now, this is basically what we can expect for most of the Mac lineup this year. Spec bumps. Don't expect any new hardware changes. Don't expect any groundbreaking new features, right? We are just pretty much expecting hardware spec bumps in the forms of these uh, M2 Pro and M2 Max chips. Now, another Mac that is going to get that update, but maybe in a little bit more of an exciting way, is the Mac Mini. That's because we're expecting, of course, a update from the M1 to the M2 Mac Mini, but also a separate higher-end configuration of an M2 Pro Mac Mini, which is rumored to come with that new M2 Pro chip. So we're going to see an even higher level entry-level desktop uh, that's going to offer even more performance and is probably going to end up being a pretty good value. Um, but what about other Macs? Like those are the most obvious Macs. Those are the ones that I expect to be updated in March, pretty much like guaranteed, but there are other Macs that Apple could update. Um, Apple still has the iMac on the M1 chip. It would seem pretty simple just to uh, switch out the chip with the M1 in that and then introduce an M2 iMac. You, you, again, you don't have to do any sort of other hardware upgrades to that product at this point. Um, and then there's also the Mac Pro, right? This Mac Pro uh, was promised to kind of be announced already uh, by the end of 2022, and it didn't come. Like, Apple missed their two-year Apple Silicon transition. So this is a product that I expect that they want to get out as soon as possible. They even already teased it when they released the Mac Studio last spring. So I feel like this product just kind of has to come out eventually. And I feel like as soon as it's ready, Apple's probably going to ship it. And then there's also some leaks and rumors basically saying that Apple is having trouble with the Mac Pro um, with that M2 Extreme chip, which would basically combine two M2 Ultra chips together. And apparently they're scrapping that idea for now. And it sounds like basically the Mac Pro is going to ship with an M2 Ultra and not an M2 Extreme. And basically the real difference between the uh, Mac Studio and the Mac Pro is that the Mac Pro is going to be expandable in some way. Like you might be able to replace the storage, you might be able to replace or not replace, but add on additional RAM for memory. But in terms of like the CPU and GPU power, apparently, at least for this first iteration, it's looking like it might be the same as the Mac Studio. So let me know in the comments below. Is that like a deal breaker? I mean, most people aren't buying the Mac Pro anyway, right? But like, does that make you upset that potentially this Mac Pro might actually have the same CPU and GPU power as a Mac Studio? So uh, obviously if the Mac Pro is coming out, again, we could probably expect uh, a spec bump upgrade to the Mac Studio as well. If uh, that's getting the M2 Ultra chip, well, of course you can also release a new Mac Studio with the M2 Ultra chip alongside of that. So that is basically the Mac updates uh, for this March event. And I think it really is going to be a Mac focused event, which also means there might be some Mac accessories launching alongside of it. Uh, one of those would be a new studio display. Uh, but probably a higher end version. So obviously we have the Pro Display XDR and there is probably something that is going to come along and replace that. Like there's going to be an update to that Pro Display XDR 
And apparently it's gonna be something like uh, a 6K mini LED display. Maybe Apple wizardry will be able to put like a 120 Hertz refresh rate into that display. I don't know how they do it based on the Thunderbolt connectivity, uh, you know, the bandwidth that Thunderbolt provides, but maybe they'll do it. Maybe they'll do something like that. All right, now moving along, uh, there's another event that's coming out. And after the spring event, usually the next event that Apple does is their annual Worldwide Developers Conference or WWDC. Obviously at WWDC, it is mostly a software focused event, but there is potentially uh, room for a little bit of a shakeup this year. And that would be Apple's long rumored Apple AR slash VR headset. Basically, um, this thing sounds like it's going to be a crazy, uh, really expensive headset that is mostly going to focus actually on virtual reality uh, with like dual 8K displays. And apparently it's gonna cost like a bunch of money. Like rumors are saying this might cost like $3,000, uh, which as a consumer level product might be a pretty difficult sell. And apparently Apple isn't even expecting to sell like a huge amount of them to start off with. So that's, this is gonna be interesting, right? Like this might actually be a headset that's more geared towards developers for like maybe like a future product. But either way, it's a very exciting one because if Apple does release a headset, uh, it is an indication that they are getting into a new product category and that doesn't happen every day. Um, you know, currently for me, AR, or not AR, but VR headsets make me kind of kind of queasy. So I'm kind of interested to see Apple's take on it, see if they can kind of perfect it, maybe get rid of some of the negative issues that current VR headsets have, and maybe just make a more polished product because current VR headsets don't look all that great. So maybe Apple with their uh, design and the power of their Apple Silicon chips, like maybe they'll actually be able to make a pretty compact but powerful uh, form factor going forward for this. So I'm, I'm really excited for that. Uh, I'm curious to see if it will be at WWDC. And based on all the rumors, it sounds like we are going to get this headset sometime this year, but rumors have been wrong before. Maybe they're wrong again. Um, but after that event, obviously it's the big event, right? After WWDC, there's usually maybe some summer press releases or something like that, but we're not we're not gonna cover anything like a surprise press release. We're going right to Apple's September event. And of course, you know, that's when we're getting the new iPhones and the new Apple Watches and some other stuff too. So at this September event, obviously it's gonna be iPhone 15. Yeah, iPhone 15. Um, the normal iPhone 15 actually sounds like it's going to be a much more exciting upgrade than what we got with the 14, right? So uh, apparently it's going to have the same design as the iPhone 14 Pro, which means the dynamic island is coming to the iPhone 14. That's great. Um, it's also now rumored to be getting the same camera as the iPhone 14 Pro, which again makes sense because it seems like, uh, at least for the last few iterations, Apple has been putting kind of like new camera sensors and hardware into the Pro models first and then next year, uh, the normal models basically adopt whatever the pro camera module was from that year, minus something like the telephoto lens. So it looks like for the iPhone 15, we will be getting that 48 megapixel sensor that debuted on this iPhone 14 Pro. Speaking of the pro models, obviously a new iPhone 15 Pro is coming as well. Um, this is actually rumored to be getting an even more upgraded camera sensor. Yes, it's gonna have a better camera sensor than what we got on the 14 Pro and maybe even better camera optics. Uh, one of the big rumors for this year is a enhanced telephoto lens. Currently rumors are saying it's probably gonna be around 6X in the zoom range, uh, which makes sense to me. I think they should get rid of the 3X lens on the Pro models, considering they just came out with this new 2X mode uh, with that 48 megapixel sensor. So the 3X mode on the 14 Pro is kind of redundant. Um, there's also some rumors that like maybe the 14, or sorry, the 15 Pro will get like titanium uh, material in it, kind of like the Apple Watch Ultra did. And even rumors saying that maybe Apple's just gonna make like an iPhone 15 Ultra because of the success of the Apple Watch Ultra, which I think would be an interesting idea. I actually made a video on that saying like, I think it would be a good idea to make a higher end version of the iPhone basically, because based on the sales data for this year, people are opting to buy the pro models over the regular models. And if people are willing to spend more money, if like that's becoming the new normal phone, there is more room in that higher end range of phones. And I think Apple could make a pretty compelling phone there um, with maybe better screen technology, a bigger screen, uh, more premium material like titanium, or even just putting in uh, an even better camera than what we currently get 
on the Pro Series phone. So I think that's all pretty exciting. Uh, obviously, after that, we can expect new Apple Watches like we do every year. Uh, the Series 8 wasn't that big of an upgrade, so maybe this year the Series 9 will be. Uh, not really that many rumors on it. Obviously, we got the body temperature sensor with the Series 8, so who knows if there's actually gonna be any new health sensors on the Series 9, but I think at least we can expect at least a performance boost uh, with a new S9 chip because we didn't get that in the Series 8 and we didn't get that in the Series 7, so it's due for a performance boost. Um, also, there's now rumors of a new Apple Watch Ultra, an Apple Watch Ultra 2, which apparently is going to get an even bigger display. I wonder how they'll fit that in. Maybe they'll just reduce the bezels around it, but also, Apparently, this display is going to use new technology. It's going to be a micro LED display, and that has been long rumored to be a display technology on the Apple Watch. And it looks like, and this actually makes sense considering the Apple Watch Ultra costs more money, right? It starts at $800. Apparently, that micro LED tech is going to be going into this Apple Watch Ultra which is kind of exciting. Of course, I also think around this time frame, we could probably expect an update to the iPad lineup. Uh, we just got that new 10th generation iPad with the redesign, so maybe a spec bump there. Uh, the iPad Air is kind of in this weird place, so maybe Apple can do something to differentiate that product as well. Uh, but I really think the iPad Pro, at least this year, is due for some sort of redesign. We've had this design uh, with us for quite some time now. And with this last update for the M2 iPad Pro, a lot of people viewed it as pretty lackluster. So I think it's long past time for an update to this iPad Pro. That's a little bit more exciting, at least a bigger update than it received this year uh, than just a chip swap. But but we'll see for that too. Uh, what about like wildcard products? I didn't want to include these into any event because I, I honestly don't know the timing and I don't wanna be wrong in this video or, or at least massively wrong. Um, and there's a couple interesting products here. I just wanna name a few. So one interesting product to me, one I'm really excited for is a 15 inch MacBook Air. Yeah, a 15 inch version of the M2 MacBook Air. Um, Mark Gurman, Ming-Chi Kuo, a lot of analysts or reporters are saying uh, that this is coming and it's going to be announced in 2023. I think this is actually a great product. Um, I've been saying that Apple should make a bigger laptop size uh, closer to the entry level price point because the only option for a big laptop for users right now is a 16 inch MacBook Pro and that is $2,500 uh, starting price. That's very expensive. So if they can get an M2 MacBook Air um, with a bigger display, price it around you know, $1,400, $1,500, I just think that's a win. Like, I think like a lot of people are going to buy that laptop because they just want a bigger display and they don't need all the power that the MacBook Pro offers. So that's a wild card product. I don't know if they're gonna announce that at the March event. I kind of doubt it. Maybe they'll announce that WWDC or maybe whenever, right? Like it's just a bigger version of the MacBook Air. It kind of isn't a groundbreaking product. It's, it's exciting to me, but it's not a groundbreaking product. So they could even do that in a press release. Um, another product that I'm really, really excited for, I just didn't know where to place it, is apparently a new HomePod. Apparently there's rumors that Apple is working on a bigger version of the HomePod again, and it's supposed to be announced sometime in 2023. Uh, obviously, I guess we could just expect a big HomePod with better sound than the HomePod mini, probably using like the same uh, chipset as that. So that would be like the Series 8 watch chip, which is basically like an S6 chip. So yeah, all, all the processing power from the Apple Watch chip or whatever. Uh, but yeah, just an updated version of that big HomePod. They don't sell the big HomePod anymore. I want a new HomePod with better sound. I, I still have two big HomePods that I use and I love them. Uh, so if they ever die, I need a replacement for them. So I'm, I'm really excited and I hope that Apple makes that product and I hope they release that sometime in 2023. And then the last product, which I would expect to have some sort of update in 2023, is AirPods Max. Now, I like my AirPods Max, I use them a lot, uh, but honestly, when the AirPods Pro 2 came out, those were just kind of like good enough to where I was like, oh, if I'm gonna be going anywhere, I'll just bring my AirPods Pro 2. And it's like, maybe if I'm at home, I'll put on the AirPods Max, but it's not that often. Uh, there was a lot of great upgrades with the AirPods Pro 2. Um, the noise cancellation improvements on that were just really good. The new transparency mode with, with the adaptive transparency, like there's a lot of upgrades that they can bring to AirPods Max and then maybe even um, include support for higher bitrate audio as well, which a lot of people really wanted with the original versions of those headphones. And, and yeah, they're getting a little bit older now. They're a premium product. They should be updated with the latest technology. So I would expect AirPods Max to also be updated sometime in 2023. I just don't know when.
But yeah, basically those are all the major products that I expect Apple to announce or update uh, for 2023. And there's a lot of products, if you couldn't tell. Like, it's gonna be a pretty big year if Apple actually crosses off all these products on their list, especially on the Mac side. But yeah, let me know. Are you excited for all of these products coming out in 2023? Which one are you looking forward to the most? And also, is there any product in this video that you think I should do a more detailed or a, a dedicated video on? I'm kind of thinking maybe I wanna do one on the 15-inch uh, M2 MacBook Air because I'm, I'm personally just excited for that. But let me know in the comments below. Is there any product that you really want me to cover in depth in a dedicated video? Because obviously this video is, you know, it's covering a lot of general products that Apple is releasing. So we can't really dive into detail like we would on a dedicated video. But all right, thank you so much for watching. Hope you're having a happy new year so far. Plan to see this face a lot more in 2023. 2023, they say it's the year of the rabbit. I think it's the year of Greg's gadgets. So I'll see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.